Hello people, and welcome to my guide for making Super Mario World levels. This will be part one, a sort of basic introduction to the program called Lunar Magic. And yeah, coming parts will be a little more advanced. This one will be very, very basic. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one real quick. First thing you want to do is you want to take your ROM, Control c Control v just in the same folder simply because Lunomatic does not have a save as feature so the only way to save is to rewrite your old ROM basically of course what that means is that if you cha change something and save you can't revert it and that would be bad simply gonna name this SMWT or something go back and pop up Lunomatic First thing you need to know, three layers. Layer 1, layer 2, sprites. Not exactly sure what layer 1... Oh, I'm sorry, layer 2 does. Layer 1, mostly static stuff, ground, non-animated crap. Sprites, more moving stuff, enemies, that kind of thing, flying blocks. Right. So we open ROM, and we find our smwt.smc. And here we go, and it always opens Yoshi's Island 1 for some arbitrary reason. Right. Known as level 105, that's hexadecimal code, and if you don't know what that is, it doesn't really matter. You will notice when I select things, highlight things here, that ground gets selected, Yoshi coin, not animated, gets selected, bushes, stuff that doesn't move gets selected because I have layer 1. What we're going to do to just start from scratch is press delete. Real simple. Go into sprite layer, remove stuff, delete. Now, naturally if we start this level, Mario will suffer gravity and die brutally and that would be kind of cheap to be honest. Let's add some ground. Layer 1, static objects, add objects window, find some ground. Proper one, ledge for example is a good one to just have a <coughs> Sorry about that. Have a static, just random flat ground. That doesn't really do much, but it's a good for a starting location and midway goals and that kind of thing. Right, so now for example, if I would like to go... Uh, place with right click. Sorry about that. Might not be obvious. Right click to add stuff that you have selected. Now, for example, if I would like to add some coins right here and I right click again, more ground. Yeah. Lunar Magic automatically duplicates anything that you have highlighted by default, which is kind of annoying to begin with. One way to bypass this is simply left click to, to deselect and right click to place. There we go. Other way, let's add some turn blocks. Hold down control key, right click. Now you can simply just grab the edges here and drag them in all kinds of directions and there is a length limit just so you know there we go that's the limit of the length of these that I can place and even though these are actually targeted and reshaped resized as one they are still handled by the game as one single unit right so now here we have our little turn blocks and we have our little coins we have a little ground to walk on. Let's just reshape these coins because it'll look prettier. There we go. Now we have three coins and five turn blocks that don't really do anything. Let's make sure we can smash those, shall we? So what we need to do, we we'll go into the sprite layer and add sprites. I believe if we look around here for a bit we can find a mushroom. Here we go. Again, just right click wherever you want it. Same thing with objects. If you have something highlighted and right click, automatically duplicates. Delete, delete. Very simple. Let's just also for the sake of it, add some enemies of some kind. Green Koopa no shell. Well, this is the first level, so let's just make it really easy. Let's have one green Koopa with no shell and he will be over there somewhere. Alright. Now then, let's close down this window, go back into layer 1 and 
just remove some more stuff ahead here. Sprite layer. Delete. Oh crap. Never mind. I wanted to delete a lot of stuff anyway. Gonna go into layer one and create some more interesting ground basically. This edge here, for example, to the right looks really bad. So what we're gonna do, standard objects, here we have something called a solid right edge and top edge even. Gonna give us a pretty little corner. Yay! Ain't it beautiful? So we're gonna make a little jump, so we're gonna go ahead and find us a solid... Yeah, here we go. You can also make them non-solid, for example. Let's actually do that, just to show how that would work. Left edge. There we are. And where do we find the left edge? Sorry, here we go. Left edge, solid top. Now we can also place stuff behind here if we wanna. I would assume it looks good still. I'm not exactly sure. Let's find our walk through dirt. Here we are. And let's make sure this part is actually in front. And that still looks good. Nice. So we drag this down and we drag this out and we select this thing and we drag it down and we can't drag that right for some disturbed reason so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna find ledge again to create some walkable... Oh, sorry, now I screwed up. See, I forgot to deselect and that, that's what happens. Duplicates. Can be annoying. Right, so we make some more up here. And yeah, you get the idea of that basic stuff. Right, and now what I've also done is I've just built some random more stuff just to fill out. Let's say we'd want to place a midway goal. Or let's make a harder enemy first than just the one we had done there. Also what I've done here is I actually have normal turn blocks, normal turn blocks, and an extended object. To access those you simply go into this curtain thingy right here, extended objects, and that's a turn block with a flower inside. Those will actually be mushrooms if you're small, just FYI. Go to sprite, add sprites, and let's head to something tile set specific where we have some more, some cooler enemies basically. Here you can see that most of these look really really weird this is because of the tile sets. Basically, what tile sets are are different sets of tiles. No, um, different kinds of levels can have different kinds of enemies and different kinds of objects, for that matter. So some of them won't work on some levels. These ones that look broken will actually appear broken in the game as well. I do believe there's a way to bypass this. I'm not exactly sure how, though. Actually, sorry. Um, see if we can find something more interesting, come on. What you'll also notice as I scroll down here is that there's no real method to the order of these damn sprites. So finding what you want, here we go, here we have a charging shock, perfect. Let's actually add that one, and I just realized a little glitch in my background here, so let's drag that bit just like so, beautiful. Gonna have a little charging chuck. Again, wrong layer. Gotta remember that. Now though... Wall edge. Make sure we can jump that distance, something like that. Drag it. And let's set a midway point, is what we want to do. Let's say that that's what we want to do for now. That's really early obviously so we would do that really but you get the idea. Let's say we want to do that. Let's find my left edge with solid top. Just place that one right so. That one like so. Now we're gonna have to go into sprites again to find the midway goal line which I do not recall where it is so bear with me here for a couple of seconds as I scan now we have regular goal line and secret goal line flashing by, and it's not right there. Hang on, let me pause while I look. There we go. Midway point bar is actually in add objects, extended objects, just to screw with your head. The goal line is in sprites. 
but the midway point for some reason isn't. Now as I place this, we don't have a screen entrance right here. We have the midway point, which will activate the midway point, obviously, but the midway entrance is actually over there, so yeah, screen entrances is in, <laughs> entrances is, is, is in the next part, but I don't think I have time for much more right now. Bye!